Hello there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. We've talked about shield walls. We've talked about heroic and not-so-heroic cavalry charges. Today, we're going to be taking a look at 10 of the best archers in film. The Game of Thrones is very much about the younger generation in Westeros. You have Cersei's and Jaime Lannister, Jon and Sansa Stark, and that crazy dragon woman from across the Narrow Sea. They're all clawing for power and fighting amongst each other, but to the older generation that lived through Robert's Rebellion, they're just young pups. Sometimes age and experience trumps youth and energy. Such was the case with Bryden Tully, nicknamed the Blackfish, because he was unwilling to accept the arranged marriages made by his older brother, Hoster Tully. Now, when Hoster Tully, Lord of Riverrun, died, it was his son, Lord Edmure, who would take over his position. But Edmure Tully was of the new generation, and like many in his generation, he dreamed of glory, but did not yet have the skills to actually achieve that glory. This became very apparent during his father's funeral when he was assigned to lighting his father's funeral pyre, which was floating on a small boat down the river. After watching Edmure miss three consecutive shots, the Blackfish pushes his nephew aside, grabs his bow, glances quickly at the wind for a moment, and lets loose. Before the arrow has even reached its apex in the sky, Bryden Tully already knows he's on his mark. It's more about feel and instinct when you've been peppering fools for half a century with a bow. Look, I like to make a lot of fun of Legolos, not because he's an archer, but because he's a knife-eared wood elf. His abilities with the bow and arrow, however, are legendary. Legolas has amazing agility, aim, speed, and strength. He can take down foes while riding swiftly on horseback. He can take down foes while sliding down stairs on a shield. He can take down foes while standing on top of two dwarves' heads while they themselves are riding down a river in barrels. He can take down a giant bat while he's being held by it and flying upside down. He also has the precision to shoot right through a rope and cause an entire siege ladder of uruk to go crashing to their deaths. Legolas has the power to take down a cave troll with one arrow, and even on Oliphant, which of course still counts for one kill. Let's also not forget his close quarter combat abilities. He rapid fires like he's holding a six shooter. I mean, sure, Legolas did miss the Olympic torch carrying uruk who ends up breaching the walls of Helm's Deep, but I'm pretty sure that guy was on PCP. Legolas is a badass with the bow, and on a list of badasses with bows, he definitely stands out. In the ancient Scottish kingdom of Dumbruck, the women don't really have that much of a choice of who they get to marry. A bunch of suitors kind of just fight each other for that right. Princess Merida, however, is your typical tomboy. Not only is she extremely brave, but also extremely independent. The idea of having a marriage arranged for her was unacceptable. And so from a young age, Princess Merida partook in traditionally male activities like sword fighting, horse riding, and of course archery. While her mother was quite traditional, her father, King Fergus, wanted her daughter to be happy, and more importantly, be able to defend herself if needed. Now, when Princess Merida turned 16, she was ready to be married off. Princes from all over the region came to compete for her in a game of skill. The winner would get to marry her. During the games, Merida's potential suitors are underwhelming. The only person who manages to hit a bullseye during a archery contest is a boy named Wee Dingwall, and it's clearly an accident that he hit the bullseye. The princess decides to show the entire kingdom that none of these suitors are good enough for her, and she proceeds to hit bullseyes on each one of the suitors' targets and manages to even split Wee Dingle's shot in half. Needless to say, her archery is perfect. She's mastered it. Robin Hood is not just a terrible app that leads young, inexperienced, first-time traders into the stock market for all of the wrong reasons. It was also once the name of a hero bandit who stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Robin Hood also happened to be a really good marksman with the bow and arrow. He learned how to fight during the Holy Crusades in the Middle East. Now, there are many iterations of Robin Hood, from Kevin Costner to Russell Crowe, but Taron Egerton's most recent portrayal of the folk hero is, in my opinion, one of the more interesting ones. I really enjoyed the early scenes when we see Robin Hood fighting in the Middle East against the Saracens. There's probably a direct parallel between these scenes and the UK sending their own soldiers to the Middle East during the wars against terror. 
We see Robin Hood carefully work his way through the cramped streets, checking corners and taking cover as if he were in Mosul. All around him in the towers, the enemies hide using mechanical crossbows, which can fire dozens of bolts at the same time. They have a devastating impact on the Crusaders, similar to a RPG or a machine gun. The sound of the arrows striking bodies and the stones are exaggerated and mimic gunfire, and the pace of the combat is like what you would expect in modern day urban combat situations. I mean, at one point when Robin Hood and his men are about to get overrun by an ambush, they actually fire up a flare into the sky and call for fire support from a bunch of trebuchets. Realistic or not, I really appreciate this kind of creativity. At this point, Robin Hood is still at the beginning of his journey. He still hasn't become a legend, but soon he'll be trading in his longbow for something a bit more wieldy, and he'll be trained by Little John, the fearsome Saracen warrior who almost killed him overseas. Robin Hood might have accuracy before, but now Little John will teach him the Saracen's secret of shooting three arrows in just under a second. What ensues in the rest of the movie is some really cool looking archery. Ashikata is the last prince of the Emishi tribe, the forgotten people who were pushed from their lands by the Emperor of Japan into the forest. With each generation, their bloodlines become weaker. One day, an angry demon attacks the Emishi village, and Ashikata immediately springs into action and engages it in battle. It turns out that this demon was actually once a boar god named Nago. Nago had been wounded by a human rifle bullet, and the wound had festered and filled him with hatred. Ashikata manages to defeat Nago and put him out of his misery, but before he does, the demon worms on Nago manage to infect his arm. Such infections are considered a death sentence, and so the Amishi tribe has no choice but to banish their last prince. Ashikata decides to dedicate whatever time he has left on Earth to ending the fight between the animal spirits in the forest and the humans. Along his way to finding the source of all this conflict, he witnesses a group of samurai attacking a village of innocent people. Ashikata immediately engages these samurai, but this time, the demon infection in his arm increases the power of his arrows to a ridiculous level. His arrows can now decapitate people in one swift blow. I guess it's kind of a silver lining to an otherwise very deadly disease. Blade being a half-vampire, half-human hybrid has always been the main focus of his own vampire-killing series, but Blade has always had very capable human allies. One of them is Abigail Whistler. She not only is a very capable hand-to-hand -hand combatant, she's also extremely skilled with a compound bow. But like all vampire hunters in the Blade world, she also needs some really cool gadgets to even the playing field. And Abigail Whistler does not disappoint. From the arrows that can drill through steel doors to the arrows that bounce around corners, Abby comes prepared for the battle with the right tools. Which is how she makes up for being a weak, puny human. But even humans can help Blade in his battle against the undead hordes. When Blade is going up against the OG vampire Dracula himself, he's only able to damage the vampire lord thanks to Abigail's trusty anti-vampire virus tip arrow. Matt Damon clearly is out of place when he finds himself in China on the Great Wall in the middle of an epic battle between the Song Dynasty and a massive horde of monsters that attempt to kill everything in its path. This, of course, is the real reason why the Great Wall of China was built. Matt Damon and his pal Din Djarin are detained by Song Dynasty warriors because they are suspected to be spies here to steal the secrets of gunpowder, which is exactly what they're here for. Matt Damon and Din Djarin also happen to be very skilled warriors. Matt Damon specifically is a very skilled archer, and so when one of the monsters break through the Great Wall's defenses, he and his pal immediately spring into action and prove their worth. Now, these monsters are extremely difficult to kill. They can easily outmuscle an entire shield wall formation of spearmen, and they only really have one weak spot, the eyes on their shoulders. Matt Damon manages to break apart a crossbow and fashions himself a bow, while Din Djarin uses a red cape to distract the monster, because obviously he's Spanish. Matt Damon manages to hit the monster with two slow-mo close quarter shots and ends up killing the beast. Now you're thinking this is all just a fluke, right? Well, later that night, Matt Damon is able to impress the entire song garrison on the wall with some very impressive rapid arrow trick shooting. Unfortunately, as fast as Matt Damon can shoot, he still can't beat the speed of a superhuman when first comes.
Hawkeye is impressive because he supposedly is a normal human being, and somehow he's also an Avenger who can hang alongside superheroes like Thor and Iron Man. Sure, he has some really cool gadgets that help him, like explosive tipped arrows, but at the end of the day, he's just a master archer and a crazy person who is in peak physical condition. Oh, it's also said that his bow actually has a draw weight of 250 pounds, which is completely ridiculous. Now, I've heard of longbows and heavy crossbows that have that kind of weight behind them. But for Hawkeye to fire his bow as casually as he does, it means he definitely is taking steroids and basically firing a hand ballista. This is also why a lot of RPG games are wrong. Archers don't need dexterity and agility. They need strength and endurance. Rambo appreciates a good bow and arrow. For one, they're silent, and two, you can put exploding tips on them to create unrealistically large explosions. But what really impresses me about Rambo is that as he gets older, he still maintains his bow firing skills. And we can tell he really enjoys this, especially when he's fighting against injustice. I mean, check out this combo that he pulls off in this scene. One knee shot, then a head shot, and then into a landmine. That combo should earn Rambo extra points. And before he lands that combo, he even takes out another three guys in quick order before they can even fire back at him. Rambo is extremely stealthy and efficient at killing people. I mean, sure, later on he kind of goes ham with a 50 cal machine gun, but I do really appreciate the fact that he still maintains his skill as an archer. Look, the recent rendition of Lara Croft might seem like a lost Taurus at times, but she is a badass in her own right. When she attempts to free a bunch of prisoners from an evil Tomb Raider, she must take on an entire camp of armed soldiers, equip the rifles while she only has a measly bow. She attempts to provide cover for these prisoners as they run away from the camp with her bow and arrow. And while under heavy fire, she even manages to get a few kills. Doing CQB during ancient times when people are running at you with swords and spears is one thing, Doing CQB in modern times and attempting to hit someone with a bow and arrow while they're firing at you with a gun is another level of badassness. So there you have it guys, 10 master archers who are really good at what they do for different reasons. Let me know in the comment section below if I've missed any of your favorite archers in movies. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.